So today we're on Paint Life Supply Co. answering some questions for customers coming in and out today, but I gotta go head out to the job site soon. We're gonna be doing some spraying today and we gotta clean sprayers when we do spraying. These sprayers are pretty expensive sprayers. I got all kinds of sprayers. Uh, they are a big investment, so you do wanna take care of them. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks cleaning your sprayers. So if you wanna know how to properly protect your investment, come out to the job site with me to uh, check out some tips and tricks. All right, so we're done spraying the accent color, Luke. Um, now we gotta clean the sprayer up. We'll get this thing going. I'm gonna give you just a few quick pointers. I'm um, cleaning it up, get a couple buckets of water, which you already got a couple buckets of clean water. Make sure the buckets are uh, very clean. There's not a lot of debris in them. Otherwise, that's just gonna go through our pump and um, into our filter. So make sure it's you know, very clean like this. That looks good. So the first step of the process is getting um, our intake tube into clean water. So we'll move some clean water over here. Um, I'm gonna take my intake tube so I don't get air in it and I'll quickly move it over into my clean water like that. This is gonna be dirty water. We're gonna run dirty water into there. Our paint's gonna be right here. Now I like to take, just switch this thing around so we can clean this off without getting our hands down in there. So we're cleaning this off just like that. So that's all just about nice and clean. Now you're gonna start running. We've actually got two hoses today. We were videoing um, spraying with two guns. So we got two lines to clean out. So there's quite a bit of paint in the lines. So we don't wanna waste the paint. So um, you're gonna run you know, what's left over in there. As soon as you start to see water, um, then you'll stop pulling the trigger and then all of our dirty water is gonna go here. We got two clean buckets of water. We got one um, dirty water. So this, we don't need this anymore. We were using this to stir our paint and putting bug juice in our paint. This will go into our dirty water bucket right there. Our tips will clean out at the very end. Um, we'll drop them into the clean water. So go ahead, run it on the side. So you wanna shoot it on the side. So begin pulling the trigger. You're gonna see the viscosity change here soon. You just gotta keep looking at it and you're gonna see it all of a sudden start to get thinner and then quit pulling the trigger as soon as you see that change. So it's starting to change, but not yet. So right about now. So I don't mind getting a little bit of water onto the top um, in exterior paint. Trim paint, you don't want any water in it, or cabinet paint, because it'll make it run a lot easier. Exterior paint, it's not bad to get just a slight amount of water in it. Now you start running your dirty water out. Always shoot it on the side of the bucket, so it doesn't, if you shoot straight down the bucket, it's gonna kick back up in your face. Um, I need to find the lid for this. So you'll run, a little bit through there. Now you can stop running that. We've got a second line right here we need to empty. Now, when I'm, when I'm actually um, cleaning my guns, I don't ever like to um, clean it without having an extension on it. And I could show you, um, when you pull the trigger without an extension, paint has a tendency to shoot all over the place. So you can swap extensions or grab another extension out of the vehicle. I just swap extensions, stick it on this gun. And then you're gonna do the same thing here. You got a shorter hose on this one so you don't have as much paint in this hose. So now you understand the process there. Go ahead and do that. I'm gonna find the lid for this gallon of paint here. Oh, you can go. Why is there no pressure? Oh, so why is there no pressure? It's a good question. The valve is off. Oh. That one's on. Direction. Ah, now you got pressure. So he stopped for one second now. 
now when you're cleaning the pump you don't want really high pressure going through the pump so turn the pump down one of the nice things about this pump some of them have an auto or a clean feature you will turn you'll turn it to clean and it'll cycle up and down so pull the trigger turn it to you'll hear it start cycling And you can see it, it has a spot on there. It shows um, the clean on it, which is right there. So now you've got water in the lines. You can stop that because no matter how clean the water comes out of here, you can have completely clean water um, coming out of the gun. One of the unfortunate things with the Titan um, impact is you have the 440 impact is you have to take off the manifold filter and I don't know if you remember that Luke so manifold filters got to come off. Yeah so I would turn turn your sprayer off, pull your gun, trigger, release that pressure, release the pressure off your um, prime valve. So you got prime valve on this side over here, release that pressure, always hold this. Pressure release, now you can unscrew your filter. So that's uh, one, of the, um, like the, one of the things I do like about the 410 is this manifold filter never has to come off. But you'll see, no matter how clean you get the sprayer, you can pull this off and you're gonna have paint like this just gummed up down in the back because the water doesn't filter all the way through you know this manifold so we need to clean this off before we continue the process so i usually just grab the hose we'll turn the hose on and we'll clean that off right here with the hose this is an actual um extremely important step of the process because if you're using black today and tomorrow we went to spray a white door um, and you didn't take this manifold filter off you're probably going to get white or black specks of paint in your white um, sprayed door. You'll probably be wondering why, and it's actually picking up paint out of the back of this filter, um, manifold filter. So you're gonna have to shoot water down inside there also. And it's nice to have a hose that um, has an on off valve that shoots a sharp stream. We actually carry them in our um, trailer, but for some reason it's not in there. So I think that that's looking pretty good. Now you got to do or actually the end of that. Is... The point of the the 440 impact. This always goes. The point will go in back drop down inside the manifold filter. Sometimes it's really hard to get it all the way, you know, back in the back unless unless you can put your hand on it and shake it. But it's kind of one of the like what the benefit of most other sprayers um, like in even uh, Titan 410 is you typically don't have to get your hands in the water, get your hands dirty, but a 440 impact, you got to take it off, unfortunately, and clean it out. So you can look down in there and see if all the paint is gone out of it. So when you're done, um, point it's going to drop into your manifold filter you're going to hand tighten that back on once again this is this manifold filter this is a hand tight manifold filter you do not want to use tools to tighten it don't grab a wrench and tighten it just snug it on there snugly and now we'll begin finishing up our cleaning process so now start running water through your hoses so what I like to do now, I've got this thing, you know, all clean. The rock filter is clean. Um, the hose has got water in them. The manifold filter is clean. I like to switch over to fresh water, completely clean. Switch around one more time. Now we're running really clean water through. So I'd switch guns now, run some water through that other gun. If you're running two guns, can you clean them both? Spray them both you know, at once or? Go ahead. Let's. Give it a try. We'll give it a try. Seems pretty weak. Uh, cleaning, you don't need a lot of pressure, just water flowing through it. So, okay, you, and then you want to stop that. 
And then we also want to run, clean this off, and we want to run fresh water through our um, prime valve if you actually ran paint through it. So we're going to run, hold on to it. Fresh water through there. Now you can run your guns again. So what I like to do too is um, every now and then I'm going to lift this up let water run out if it looks fresh and clean there's no paint mixed in the water then i know my sprayer is almost um, completely cleaned out i'm going to run a little bit more through prime valve run a little bit more through your gun now you can stop that what i what i like to do is um you want this to be completely fresh clean water and the way I, I'll run some in my hand. You can see there's you know, a lot of black in there still, a lot of paint still mixed in there. So it's not quite clean yet. So we're gonna continue running some water through there, but wanna stop, stop right now. What I like to do is instead of just continually doing that, we're gonna go off, do some other things. It's gonna set for a little bit and the, just the water setting the lines is gonna help dissolve any paint stuck in the lines, built up in the lines or in the guns. And then we'll come back, run a little bit more water through it again it'll be crystal clear you know when we come back the next time one other step that we we're going to be doing when cleaning our sprayer is also cleaning the gun filter so either clean them when you clean your sprayer or clean them when you show up at the job site to start spraying so a couple safety things you definitely want to turn the sprayer off pull your we got two guns here pull your gun trigger we're going to release any pressure on the gun we'll release pressure on prime valve um so we're going to hold prime valve release that pressure now this gun right here a toolless gun right here to to get to the filter gonna release the handle right here and then now this actually attaches to that portion right here like a wrench and that thing's gonna unscrew it's gonna loosen up a little bit like that it's gonna drop down so then you can start spinning the top and just thread it right off and that's gonna expose our gun filter. So you can see this gun filter was completely clean today. That's what was going through our paint. That's why you strain your paint. So we never strained our paint today just to test out our paint to see what would happen. There you go, that gun right there. We didn't use that one very off, very much today. So it doesn't have as much, but you see all that. So now we're gonna clean these things off. Um, use a hose. I can. I like to clean, you want to clean down inside there. You want to clean the filter off. So I'm going to turn the hose on and then we'll clean these off right here. Thing is, if you don't, if you don't clean your filters out and you get too much um, stuff built up on them right here, there'll be a lot of pressure on the mesh of this filter and it'll split the mesh open, ruin the filter. So you should be cleaning them every day. And then you should also be straining your paint because this is how much debris just went through um, just a little bit of spraying today, not just two gallons of paint. So clean those off really good. Run some water down inside this portion of the gun. There you go. I don't like to submerse my guns in water because typically you end up having issues with them. Sticking, run some down in there. I like to run my, there's a, a nylon seat down in there. I like to run my finger on that seat, clean that. These are just push-in filters on the RX Pro gun. So it just pushes in and it sits in there and just stays in there once it's, once it's clean. So today we were painting with a product and a montage paint, which is an upcycled, recycled and upcycled paint. And nowadays it's common for all paints to have debris in it. That's not unusual. That's why we do strain our paints uh, because if we are spraying all day long, you know, with any paint, um, that filter is probably gonna be, is gonna be 100% clogged before the end of the day, which is gonna cause all kinds of pressure related issues, spitting related issues, so forth. So this, it's a good idea to, no matter what paint you're using, um, to strain it. Once again, we're using an upcycled paint. So that's paint that would have ended up in a landfill. And now it's not in the landfill. It's on 
this house. It's a great product. We actually purchased it from um, Amazon. It's pretty good. Now we're just going to put our guns back together and we'll finish um, our finish cleaning our sprayers. So the gun just goes back together the way it came apart. The head's gonna spin thread on top. Get it down close to the handle. Once I get it close to the handle, I'm gonna line my handle up. Then I'm gonna use my knuckle guard is my wrench to tighten it back up. Hand tight, just nice and snug. Then our gun completely clean. Gonna put our sprayer one last time into fresh water. And we're gonna continue cleaning our sprayer out for the final time. So you can run water through both of those guns. There, Luke. Turn it on spray. I'm gonna turn it on, on, you can get both guns, Luke. And one thing I always do, before I start spraying for the day, the, imp, the Titan 440 Impact has an, an auto lube button right here. I'm gonna push this three times. It's gonna lubricate the, um, the packings around the piston. If you don't have the auto lube button, you're gonna just squirt a little bit of lube on your um, piston into the reservoir. And so I do that at the end of the day when I'm cleaning and at the start of the day before I start spraying. So the water's getting pretty dang clean. Um, that's what we're after right there. At the end of the day, we're also going to run uh, some what we call pump protector or antifreeze in it. So we're gonna get that, I'm gonna set that up and then that's gonna be the final. We're gonna load it up with our antifreeze pump protector and we're gonna be all done do our final uh, rinse. So I'm just using RV antifreeze. Gonna put some of that in there. Now, if you wanna know, you know what to run and store your sprayer in daily or over the winter or long-term, I got a video about all the different products you can use to put in your sprayer. So go ahead and load up. You want your prime tube to have um, your um, antifreeze in it. My, my, <laughs> Um, you want your guns to have both guns, so hoses, your prime tube. So one thing, Luke, we also got to do is run, put your guards on. You want to run uh, water through both ends, reverse the tip, run it through both sides. So your tips are clean. I like to just make sure there's no paint on the seals. Typically you get a lot of paint built up on the guard. We're going to clean that off. You might want to turn your pressure up, Luke, a little bit. Once all your tips are done, have you run um, your antifreeze through all the lines and prime tube? Go ahead and run it through your prime tube. So we're gonna hit the prime. Should see pink coming out. We got pink coming out. Now, to finalize this whole thing, it's critical. Um, critical steps: you want to turn the sprayer off, release the pressure on the gun, and release the prime tube pressure, and then we'll begin rolling our hoses up. So, if you don't release the pressure on the guns, it's harder to roll up the hoses, and it's also bad for the packings. So, we're gonna turn it off. Um, turn sprayer off, pull both gun triggers, release, we're gonna release the prime tube pressure, but I wanna make sure I hold the prime tube. Pressure is released, and we're good to roll up our hoses now.